Hey folks, today is Friday, May 31st, 2024. Last week I said it was March. Uh, it's not March, it's May. Uh, as usual, my name is Jake Baldino, here to talk about the gaming news that has been going on this week, and there is a lot of stuff to talk about, a lot of new game announcements, believe it or not. We got like seven plus new games to talk about, mostly from the PlayStation State of Play presentation. So let's just jump in. Uh, believe it or not, this presentation was not one of their bigger ones because they have like the State of Plays, which were kind of like updates, and then they have like the whole big showcases. This was not a big blowout thing. It was just some updates on some games and some game reveals, leaving some people disappointed. But at the very least, we got a couple of things to talk about. Uh, the first game we have actually, believe it or not, is a PSVR 2 game. It seems like they're still trying to support that. Uh, this is called Behemoth, uh, made by Skydance, and it is a first-person kind of adventure role-playing style game, but also featuring giant monsters. It looks like it's got some story, some real presentational elements to it, and if you're still down with VR, this looks like it might be worth a shot because it seems like it's got the budget to really back its stuff up. We also got, uh, and I'm counting this, uh, Where Winds Meet was already announced, but we got kind of like a re-reveal here, a bit more of a genuine look at it, uh, some boss battles and stuff like that, a new logo. Uh, this does look like a little bit of a Souls-like, but very much more an over-the-top action-y thing that looks like it could be a lot of fun. Also, there were some smaller games revealed uh, by PlayStation, but not directly during the showcase. Uh, the first is Caravan Sandwich, a little bit more of an indie thing if you're looking for a fun driving adventure, as well as Architect Life. This is a uh, you know, house design simulator. I honestly kind of like these things. I remember playing a lot of House Flipper Simulator when that came out, so yeah. Uh, but another one that made a big splash for some people is Ballad of Antara. This is like an action adventure RPG where it looks like you're playing as various different characters uh, that all kind of have their own cool little unique spin. I like the guy who's just carrying around a child on his back. That seems kind of wild. Uh, but this is actually going to be a free-to-play game. It was revealed after this presentation. I did not know that, so I don't know what to make of that, but it still looks kind of cool. Along with that, you're not going to believe this. You're not going to believe this. Dynasty Warriors is back. Can you believe it? What? I know. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> but Dynasty Warriors is actually back with Dynasty Warriors Origins. It looks like they're trying something a little bit different this time around. Uh, you know, we've obviously had a lot to say about the last couple of Dynasty Warriors games, but this looks like it has some potential. I am I'm a simple man. Give me a game where there's an entire army in front of you and you can swipe them away like Sauron. That's cool shit, man. Uh, then there's also this one, Infinity Nikki. This is, uh, so there were previous games like this. There was like a series. It's like a dress up game, but this is like got open world adventure elements to it. It looks very whimsical. Everybody has their different preferences. Obviously, this might be trending for like a younger audience. It could be like a cool thing. Uh, we don't know. It probably is going to have some live service type elements. It, it's called Infinity, so it looks like it's going to be this endlessly playable thing. Uh, but along with that, this was already announced, but we got the full official reveal of Concord. This is Sony's answer her to Overwatch. That's that's what I'm going to say. This is 5v5 hero character shooter. Uh, a lot of people have been comparing the characters here to something kind of like a Guardians of the Galaxy. I like a sci-fi universe that they're building here. Uh, some of the character abilities. They did show gameplay, thankfully. And in the gameplay, some of the character abilities look cool. I just don't know if it's unique enough to stand out yet. I, I need to see more. I've grown very cynical of these types of games over the years. I don't know if you have as well, but the one thing that they did announce that I think is really cool is that every week you're going to get new story vignettes when you log on, kind of actually telling a story with these characters. And that's exciting because if you told me back when Overwatch announced that we would get constant story updates about Overwatch with those cool characters, that would have hit. So I think they're onto something here. It's just a matter of whether or not those characters, this world, this story is actually worth telling. But then also the most important thing is if the game is fun to play. So a lot of things got to come together here, but it seems like Sony is really investing in it. So we're going to wait and see. Uh, there's going to be stuff rolling out for it, like betas and stuff like that. But we know the game is coming this fall. Also, the thing I was most excited to see revealed, believe it or not, is a new game, Astrobot. Yes, Astro has another game, and a lot of people were clowning on me for being excited about this one on social media, but uh, you know what, I'm, I'm just gonna be mean. Because clearly, if you don't think this is a big deal, like you haven't played Astro's Playroom, the free PS5 pack-in game thing, that game was awesome, a fun platformer and homage to PlayStation. So now that it's getting a full-featured game, and actually like a first-party published 
platforming action game, something that we just don't get anymore, I am really happy to see this. Yes, the design of Astro himself is a little generic, but it's everything else around it uh, that they did with the previous Astro stuff that is so creative and fun that I am totally down for this. And it's releasing September 6th. We also got the news that God of War Ragnarok is coming to PC. There is a PC version uh, that is dropping soon and it's got all the PC bells and whistles you want. They talked about DLSS, unlocked frame rates, uh, ultra wide support. These things make me happy. Hopefully this port is good. It is releasing September 19th, but please note that PSN is required, a PSN login for this single player game. Uh, this is a thing now. Sony's putting their games on PC, but you're gonna have to deal with this. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be very happy. Also, we got a gameplay trailer for Monster Hunter Wilds, and this looks pretty awesome. It looks a little bit more different than I expected. The emphasis on mounts is really, really fun here. Yeah, I wasn't sure how different this was gonna be from Monster Hunter World. I thought it was just gonna be like a follow-up to that, but this does look pretty exciting, so I'm keeping my eye on it. Also, the Silent Hill 2 remake got a release date. It's October 8th of this year, finally. Uh, but that was the last of the news, really, from the uh, PlayStation Direct? What are they called? State, State of Play? Oh my god. There's too many, there's too many corporate corporate live stream showcase things. But along with that state of play, Silent Hill and Konami had their own presentation thing, which I also have a link for you uh, below. It's just like a bunch of gameplay of the Silent Hill 2 remake. And I don't, I'm not sure with this one. Some of the environments are gorgeous and some of the tone is there, but I, I don't know, I'm not sure. And in terms of the combat, some of the animations and some of the stuff still looks really stiff. I know Silent Hill combat has always been stiff and rough but like now they're emphasizing it and I was expecting a little more I, I don't know I still have never really known how I felt about this remake I think this is a hard one to remake from the start but I'll let you judge for yourselves man we will judge the game when we get our hands on it but if you want to check it out now that'll be linked in the description down below as well as everything else I talk about this week I just like Silent Hill there really isn't anything else like it out there so I, I, I hope I hope they figure this one out next up before we move on this episode is sponsored by hang on Ridge. For many, many years now, I've been an everyday carry snob. I've always wanted to minimize the size of everything I'm carrying, but still actually carry the same amount of stuff, same amount of credit cards, cash, you know? So now to finally be talking about Ridge, it's great because look how slim this thing is. You don't want a George Costanza wallet, right? Is that a, does that reference even land anymore? Hello, is this thing on? The Ridge wallet is a slim front pocket wallet that, uh, you know, is essentially good for everybody. Whether you're a minimalist, you like it small and sleek like me, or with customizable features like a money clip and stuff to keep more in this. It's made of quality materials. Mine has a really nice finish. It's also got RFID protection to keep your personal information, your cards secure and safe. It's easy, responsive, no fuss, but if you're into the way they approach this, uh, consider keys as well. The Ridge key case holds one to six keys keys, nice and slim. You don't have a bunch of jangly keys. You have all of them contained in a nice slim little package. So between that, the wallet, you're good to go with not a lot in your pockets. They offer a lot of other great stuff too, but whatever you get, they offer a bunch of different varieties, colors, materials. And for Father's Day, it's a really good bet because chances are your dad's like mine. He's got a giant wallet and he's not easily impressed, but this, actually worked on them. Wow, that's a wallet? That's a nice freaking wallet. There's a reason why Ridge has over 100,000 five-star reviews. And if you don't love it after 99 days, you can send it back, no questions asked. So if you wanna check them out, now is a good time because you can get up to 40% off thanks to their Father's Day promo. All you gotta do is click the link in the description or head to ridge.com slash game ranks. Once again, that's ridge.com slash game ranks for up to 40% off and big thanks to Ridge for sponsoring these videos. Next up, Grand Theft Auto 6 on PC. Maybe, kind of, sort of. So uh, essentially, Rockstar's parent company, Take Two, the head boss there, Strauss Zelnick, did take a question recently about the game not technically having like an announcement for a PC release. And he, let's just say I'm not gonna read his quote because it is just so cool. We talked about Strauss a lot on the Straussy boy on this channel. <laughs> Very good at the corporate speak, you know, statement that doesn't really say anything. Uh, and with what he said here, if you read between the lines, he, it looks like he kind of just says that Rockstar is gonna continue to do it how they've always done it. So what I would say from this quote is that it seems like somewhat of a confirmation that it's gonna be rolled out like how we've seen it rolled out with their previous games, where it's consoles first, PC eventually. 
that's unfortunate, especially with how much bigger PC gaming is now than when Grand Theft Auto V originally released. Or, you know, b besides that, at the very least, it's not ruled out and it seems like we're gonna see it eventually. But I'll link the full quote if you wanna read it down below. Also, after weeks of speculation, the mad lads have done it at Xbox and Microsoft, announcing that Black Ops 6, the next Call of Duty, when it launches, it's gonna be available day one on Xbox Game Pass. Of course, Microsoft owns Activision Blizzard, so some people saw this coming, but this is still a pretty big shift. Call of Duty always for these companies has, has been just big movers of full priced $65, $70 game sales every year. So for them to take a portion of that and dedicate it towards hopefully boosting Game Pass numbers feels like a pretty big move. Is it gonna push Game Pass subscription levels and just notoriety to the next level? We don't know for sure, but we're definitely gonna be keeping an eye on this move from a business sense for sure. Also, can you believe we're on Call of Duty Black Ops 6? The sixth Black Ops game? Wow. Also, we got the rumor mill heating up for the Resident Evil world. I feel like we've talked about this a lot, but this week, the newest rumor suggests that uh, remakes for Resident Evil, Code Veronica, and Resident Evil Zero are in the works. Now, me personally, behind the scenes, I have heard stuff about a Code Veronica remake, but Resident Evil Zero, I didn't expect that. That's interesting. I don't know. So these remakes come from Dust Golem on social media who has leaked things, gotten some things right in the past, uh, specifically with Resident Evil. We don't know when we're gonna see this stuff, if they are even real, uh, but we also know that like the next Resident Evil, Resident Evil 9, is in the works, so. Resident Evil has a lot cooking, and as I just realized I'm wearing a Resident Evil shirt. Um, yeah, Resident Evil good. And in terms of some other smaller announcements and trailers and stuff releasing, uh, it's worth highlighting, we got a trailer for Homelander in Mortal Kombat 1, and it is glorious. As a fan of the boys, I like what I see here. A lot of people are saying he plays like Superman in Injustice, and I, I kind of expected that. Whatever, he looks cool. The characters in Mortal Kombat, the way they roll them out, it's always worth like jumping back in. It's always cool to see. Also, don't miss a Bloodborne cart. Uh, well, it's not called Bloodborne Cart anymore. It has to be legally distinct. It's called Nightmare Cart, and it's inspired by the look of Bloodborne and just like horror PS1 graphics. This is really cool. This has been a project for the, a long time now, and now it's out. It's on Steam, and you can get it. Go have fun. We love this. Uh, along with that, we got a big trailer for Destiny 2, The Final Shape. This trailer seems to have uh, really satisfied some Destiny fans, at least that I've talked to, but uh, the game also apparently has leaked in some respects, so be careful out there. If you care about spoilers for the Destiny 2 Final Shape like campaign, I guess be careful out there. But Destiny person, are you gonna play this or no? No. Oh, you're like long gone. Yes. Rip. I am so tired. <laughs> also, this is my bad. Uh, I didn't talk about this like a week or so back, but Crow Country dropped. This is on Steam. This is uh, more of an indie project, and it's a homage, a throwback to like 90s PS1 style games and survival horror games. It's got a little bit of its own style, but people are really loving it, and I, I felt bad that I missed it. I don't get to talk about every game on the show, but that feels like one I would have mentioned when it dropped, so there you go. And also, it released in early access, Rogue Prince of Persia. Yes, they made another 2D Prince of Persia game, uh, but I, I really like this one. It's kind of from the people who, who partially worked on Dead Cells, so it's got a lot of that Dead Cells DNA, but with the Prince of Persia flair. When this was announced, I, a lo I noticed a lot of people dismissed it, but it's pretty cool. I've been playing it, I really like it, but it is in early access, so it's, it's not finished. You have two bosses, that's it, but it's got potential. I put a whole video out on it on my channel, youtube.com slash Jake Baldino, if you wanna check that out. But yeah, that's all the gaming news going on this week. So I wanna hear what you think about the new announcements. You know, look, everybody can grade the state of play, be like, it was a C, it was an A, it was an eight out of 10, it was a five out of 10. That doesn't really matter to me. Like at this point, who cares? Let me know if any of the games interest you. Yeah, if any games caught your eye, let me know. Uh, let us know down below as well, because it helps like figure out like videos to make, of course. But but if nothing caught your interest, let me know what you're looking forward to hearing from Summer Games Fest announcements. That's going on next week. 
I'll be there. Hopefully I see some of you guys there, uh, but we'll see. So yeah, let me know anything in the comments about the news, Grand Theft Auto on PC, uh, you know, the new game trailers, Destiny 2, the final shape, if you're jumping in uh, next week or so. Let's talk about any of this stuff. You know, we're, we're gonna be down in the comments as much as possible, but you can always yell at me directly on social media, at Jake Baldino, pretty much everywhere, except TikTok, I'm not on TikTok. I'm trying to be an old man for once. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for being here, getting caught up on the news. Like I said, next week, I will be reporting live from Summer Game Fest. Actually, the Friday show will actually drop before Summer Game Fest. But yeah, I, either way, maybe I'll see you there. Thank you for watching. We're here every Friday to get you caught up on the news. So uh, if you like that, clicking the like button helps us. Thank you. But that's really it. I'm Jake Baldino. Have a great weekend. Be safe. Pizza's on me. Why, are, why am I yelling at you? Sorry. Anyway, I'm going to go. I need a coffee.